Hey, praise the Lord. Greeting. This is Brother Clint. I want to share with you a passage from the scripture, and then I want to address some things because of what God says in this passage. I'm in First Peter, First Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 8 and 9. May God bless the reading of his word. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. As we draw ever near to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and believe me, we are very near that time right now, as we are in the night season of the sixth day waiting for the dawning of the morning, when the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Praise the Lord. As we draw ever nearer that time, children, things are getting very serious in the world today. And things that the prophets prophesied about hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago, which they didn't understand, but the angels desired to understand those things and to look into those things. We are privileged to live in these last days when these things are becoming manifest. And as the prophets wrote about, you know, as Nahum wrote about chariots that have, you know, that are comparable to cars. And, and as Daniel said, knowledge shall uh, increase and many shall run to and fro in the last days. And in these last days, there are many technical toys that are available to men, both good men and bad men. We are coming, we have arrived actually into a time when, for instance, um, Jesus said, every eye shall see when he comes. Every eye shall see, even as the lightning flashes from the east to the west. Well, when the lightning flashes from the east to the west, many people on the earth can see it, indeed, of a truth, but not every eye can see it because there are some people that are on the other side of the earth. But nowadays, technology exists whereby if something happens in one place on the earth, everybody in the whole world can see it within seconds. So we live in that time, and right now, in that time, the last great obstacle to the global mafia, as I refer to them, uh, which are also called the New World Order government, or the global elite, the last great obstacle for them is the United States. Because the people of the United States have, or had rather, freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to bear arms, freedom to own property, all those things are gone now, and uh, pretty much, except for the enforcing thereof. Um, and in this time right now, this is November, towards the end of November, um, the year of our Lord, 2014, 5775. That piece of the puzzle is almost put into place, and, and I believe of a truth that by September of next year, it will be completed and possibly before then, um, because that is the calendar, that is the schedule that the global mafia themselves have professed that they intend to accomplish. Right now, all throughout the United States, and I have kind of a bad taste in my mouth when I say that because I want to call it the United Socialist States of America, which is what it has become. But for the sake of being respectful, I'm going to call it the United States which is what it used to be a long time ago. Right now in the United States, there are protests happening all over the place because of something that popped off in Ferguson in August. Ferguson is a town in Missouri, for those of you who don't know. I can't imagine that there's anyone in the U.S. who doesn't know about Ferguson by now. And this all popped off in August because supposedly a white police officer shot a black teenager. And this story is so ridiculous. And it was announced in hidden in broad daylight uh, several months before that happened, that it would happen. And the whole thing has been a staged event. And I'm not saying that, that a, a man wasn't shot, but what I'm saying is that number one, there's no such thing as a white police officer. There's no such thing as a white man. There's no such thing as a black man. No such thing exists or has ever existed. But this whole thing 
no matter how it happened. I, I don't know Mike Brown. I don't know what happened on that day when, when that man called Officer Wilson shot him. Um, I don't know if Mike Brown was breaking the law. I don't know if he threatened the officer. Uh, but I, I do know that if it's true that the officer fired 12 rounds into him, that that's murder, of course. When he didn't have a weapon and the officer fired 12 rounds into him, there's no excuse for that. But I don't even know if that's true. Because that's, you know, I've, I've heard that from the media, so I have no idea whether whether or not that's true. What I do know is that that whole thing and the situation that has evolved, that it has evolved into, is a giant stage show in order to create a diversion. Am I saying that there aren't actual protests going on? No, I'm not saying that at all. There are actual protests going on, but what has happened is that the, the, the federal government, through their deception arm, the Central Intelligence Agency has infiltrated, and the FBI and all sorts of other alphabet gangs, as we call them, have infiltrated these protests and have diverted the, the attention of the protests away from the criminal justice system, which has been the, the root of it, and has diverted that anger towards the communities of the people that started the protests in the first place. The people that are honestly out there protesting are peacefully protesting with signs and with their voices saying that what happened was wrong and that Darren Wilson should have been indicted. Those people are not burning down their own buildings. They are not attacking their own infrastructure. They are not attacking police officers with rocks or with guns or with mouth off cocktails. The people that are committing those acts of violence are people that have been hired by the Central Intelligence Agency and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to infiltrate those protests and to cause it to to to, to, to give their their armies reason to attack, basically, and to not only that to cause violence and to cause many people to be incarcerated, which will which you will see very soon. Um, there have been a few incarcerated so far, but that's nothing compared to what you're about to see. Not only is it uh, achieving that goal, but it is also distracting you from other things that are actually going on, from the fact that the, the criminal who is in the office of the President of the United States Corporation has taken it upon himself to enact what he considers to be laws, um, aside from the permission of the U.S. Congress or the American people, in order to create a third world nation in what used to be the United States of America. Okay, this is what is going on right under your eyes, um, right under your nose, so to speak. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about that because that's not what this message is about. What this message is about is that just as this thing that popped off in Ferguson is a distraction from the uh, organized and perpetrated and staged by the criminal mafia to keep your attention away from what they're actually doing to destroy you, so are all these things a distraction in the spirit to, to take your attention away from where it ought to be, which is on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. That's what this message that I'm giving to you right now is all about. I delivered this message to a particular family, a Christian family, um, that I am blessed to be able to know in the city of Peoria, Arizona. I delivered this message to them a few weeks ago. And boy, there was some chaos taking place at that time in their family and thank God hallelujah he has taken control again in their lives and they have been restored uh, to order and fellowship with one another and with him but for a time there there was a lot of confusion a lot of dissension and that is not the message that I gave to them at that time was from the Lord and I knew it was from the Lord but I what I didn't realize at that time fully I realized it a little but I didn't realize to what extent that message was not only for that particular family, that message was for the people of the world and most especially the people of the United States. And when I say the people, I don't mean all the people of the United States because most people of the United States are ungodly and they're not paying attention at all. But I'm talking to you, my brethren, those of you who are watching this message because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you're watching me right now preach this word to you. All these things are being sent to you as a distraction because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. When your adversary, the devil, sees that your focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
he will do just about anything he can. I shouldn't say just about. He will do anything he can to take your attention away from Jesus Christ because your adversary, the devil, knows that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And if you're under the shadow of the Almighty, then you are untouchable to the enemy, to your enemy. You are protected. You are safe. You're in a safe haven. You're kept under the shadow of his wings. And what force is there in heaven or in earth that can come against you when you are under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty God, the Most High? For if God be for us, who can be against us? But through the doctrine of Balaam, if your enemy, if your adversary, the devil, can get you to come out from under the shadow of the Most High, if he can distract you from coming, if he can distract you so that you come out from under the place where you are protected, then you are fair game, so to speak. Your adversary, the devil, is bringing destruction upon the United States of America. And, and it's God who's doing it. It's the Almighty God who has ordained it, even as the Almighty uh, even as the Almighty God ordained the destruction of Judah and Jerusalem uh, a long time ago, and he sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to destroy Jerusalem. Well, some might have said um, it was Nebuchadnezzar who destroyed Jerusalem. Others might have said it was the devil who was behind it, because the devil is a murderer from the beginning. And others might have said it was the Lord God Almighty who sent it. And each one of those people would be correct. Because the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. And when he sends somebody to destroy a nation, it is he, the Almighty God, who is ultimately the one who has sent it, even though there may be other agents who are being used as tools in order to accomplish that purpose. And so it is in these last days with what was once the United States of America, which is now the United Socialist States of America, a communist country, a police state, and which is being rapidly converted into a third world nation before our eyes and will be before the end of next year. As this is happening, your adversary, the devil, desires to keep you distracted and worried. But Jesus our Lord said, let not these things trouble you. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Let not these things trouble you, for they must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I'm not saying that don't be concerned about these things. I'm not saying don't be watchful. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither be ye afraid, because these things must come to pass. And your adversary, the devil, as he's bringing these things as he's being unleashed to bring plagues, pestilence, violence, murder, and a criminal government upon that which was the United States of America, his desire also, and that which he has sent his spirits, his unclean spirits, to accomplish, is to bring fear, confusion, and disruption between brethren. You remember in the, in the, uh, in the Proverbs, the things that, the seven things that God hates the most, one of those things was he that soweth dissension among brethren. He that soweth discord among brethren. Because when brethren are dwelling together in peace and in unity, there's power in that. And when brethren are praying together in agreement, there's power in that. But when brethren are separated, it's the old divide and conquer. Okay? If, if Satan can get us separated from one another and confused and angry and upset and not thinking right, then it's easy for him to conquer. But if we remain focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, if we remain focused in our love one for another, humbling ourselves before one another. And in fact, Peter said that right before the passage that I read to you. Let me go back to it. I'm, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5. And we started reading in, in verse 8, but let's read in verse 6. No, let's read in verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And then Peter says, be sober, be vigilant. Okay. Now remember, Jesus said, be not troubled. But Peter says, by that same spirit of Jesus Christ, be sober, be vigilant. So when Jesus said, be not troubled by these things, he wasn't saying, stick your head in the sand and don't pay attention. He was saying, don't let them cause fear 
and turmoil in your heart. But at the same time, be sober, be vigilant. What does it mean to be sober? Well, in the flesh, if you drink alcohol or you take drugs, you are, your sobriety has been tainted. So your judgment is tainted. So you can't execute right judgment. So you can't understand things the way that you ought to. So you can't speak the way that you ought to, walk the way that you ought to, act the way that you ought to. Okay, well, there is a wine in this world, the wine of Babylon. It's the things of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those things will make you drunken in the Spirit. Remember the 28th chapter of Isaiah, how, how Isaiah said by the Spirit of the Lord that the priests and the prophets were drunken, but not with wine. And they erred in judgment, and they stumbled in their own vomit. That's what's happening in the churches today because the people are drunken because of the wine of Babylon. And that's what your adversary, the devil, wants to fill you with through the doctrine of Balaam. He wants to distract you so that you come out from under the shadow of the Most High and become vulnerable. Now, brethren, my brethren, who are in the Lord Jesus Christ, baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, walking in his commandments, things are about to get very dramatic and very serious very quickly, especially in the United States. What's happening in the Ukraine is a tragedy, but it is a distraction. It is a purposeful distraction, and it's used on purpose at certain times to distract you when other things aren't working. When one shiny thing stops working, then they turn to another shiny thing to distract you. But what is actually happening is that the government of Washington, D.C. is taking over America because they work for the criminal mafia who is called the New World Order government or the global elite. And just as those things, Ferguson, Ukraine, Russia, World War III, um, all those things are being used as distractions to keep your mind as Americans off of what your government is doing. So in the spirit, all these things are also being used to distract you from the kingdom of God, from the service of the Lord Jesus Christ, to make you vulnerable so that you also will fall with those people of America that will fall very soon. America is going to fall to her knees in blood very soon. Okay, I'm not talking about years off. I'm talking about in the next weeks and months. Okay, I don't Personally, I don't think it's going to be months. I think it will be weeks. But I'm not saying that God told me that it's going to be a certain day. I'm just telling you what I see. What I see with my natural eyes from paying attention, from looking at the news, from watching and praying from knowing a little bit about history and knowing a little bit about what's going on today. Those things are being sent to distract you. Those of you who are families living together in one house who are all Christians serving the Lord, your adversary, the devil, has come to destroy you. He has come to separate you. He has come to cause division, contention, separation, accusation, jealousy, to bring all those things or any of the above that is necessary to cause division and contention between you so that you take your eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you who are Christians in a community, who have fellowship one with another, the devil has come to bring those things unto you so that you become vulnerable and broken and easily overtaken when these things come upon the U.S. of America. The reason that the United States of America, formerly known, is becoming crushed, the reason that she is being brought to her knees is because she has forsaken the living God. And if your enemy, those of you, those very few of you left in America who are Christians, I would venture a guess that there's probably three or four hundred Christians in America. Maybe five hundred, I don't know. Probably not more than that. But those of you, that small remnant, that little flock who is left in the USA, who are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a great hindrance to your adversary, the devil. You know why? Because your knees bend and your mouth opens and Jesus Christ is in your heart and his word is in your mouth. And when you bend your knees and when you begin to speak the word of God in prayer and pray for the people of that country and pray for those people around you, that is a great hindrance to the one who is being unleashed to bring wrath upon the USA. And so he has made it a goal. He has probably a whole complete department, if you will, of spirits that are sent for the specific purpose of distracting and destroying your faith so that you are not a hindrance to him when he comes to do what he is doing. So be aware of this, my brethren. Watch and pray. Fast and pray. Be alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. Let me read that passage for you once again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
This is the message that I have for you this day. You are about to watch the destruction of your country, those of you who are in the U.S. You're about to watch the destruction of your country this winter. You're about to watch many, many people be arrested for having committed no crime but objecting to the global government. You're about to see many, many people die. Millions of people die. And I'm not saying this by prophecy. I'm not saying that the Lord told me that this is going to happen and that it's going to happen on any certain day. What I'm saying is that America has rejected the living God, and I know who he is, and I know how he operates. I know what his word says, and I know what's going on in the world today, and I know what is happening over the United States of America. And I'm saying because of what I see, this is what is happening. And in the spirit, your adversary, the devil, those, that little flock of you who are Christians has sent emissaries of his to break down your faith, to distract you, and to cause your eyes to be taken off of the prize so that you are not a hindrance to the work that he is doing even now. And this is what the scripture says. Let me read it once again. Second, or excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now there are some in the churches who have made up this thing that say, well, the scripture says as a roaring lion, which means that, that he doesn't have any teeth. He's not a roaring lion. He's just as a roaring lion. Have you ever heard that before? Forget that. If you think that Satan doesn't have any teeth, you're greatly deceived. Okay. Just because the scripture says that he as is, just because the scripture says that he is as a roaring lion doesn't mean that he is not as a roaring lion in the fact that, in the sense that he doesn't have any teeth. Okay, that's ridiculous. He has teeth, and he is well able to tear. If you come out from the protection of the Most High God, you will see that your adversary, the devil, has plenty of teeth, my friend. So let's not try that. Okay, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, what if there was a roaring lion in your neighborhood that had gotten loose from the zoo or the circus or whatever? How likely would it be that you would go outside and take a walk or that you would bring your children with you and go outside and take a walk knowing that there was a roaring lion outside of the neighborhood? I tend to think that if you knew about that, you would probably stay inside and you would keep the gun loaded. So should it be now in the spirit. Hear what I say in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Praise the Lord. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Okay, Not by picketing, not by rioting, not by imagining that some men are black and some men are white, not by cursing the government, not by planning revolts, but in the faith. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And many stumbled at his words and still do today. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye shall have no life in you. And they stumbled on that. And they said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And today Catholics and Protestants still stumble on that. And they think that the Mass or the Eucharist is, is the flesh and the blood of, of, of Jesus Christ. But he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profiteth nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Hear these words. They, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Which means that those things that are coming upon you, they are coming upon your brethren also in every place in the world. This is a time to be sober. This is a time to be awake and alert. Awake unto righteousness and sin not. Awake unto the things that are happening in the world today. And do not let the enemy sow discord between you and your brother. If you have a brother or a sister right now that you're in discord with because you had a misunderstanding and either you're angry with them or they're angry with you, get that taken care of. Repent. Humble yourself before that brother or that sister. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong in the matter that caused you to be separated. It doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. What is relevant is that you humble yourself and make it right with that brother or sister. And cause that bond in the spirit that God put there to be repaired and strengthened. And pray and love your brother, love your sister, 
forgive one another. Be patient with one another and forgive one another, even as Christ also forgave us. And let us remember that in these last times when devils are being sent like wild maniacs all throughout the world, and especially all throughout the U.S., to cause dissension and, and, and confusion and uprising and anger and hatred and that mob mentality that is causing people to go insane and destroy their own communities. When all these things are coming to pass, look around and see in the Spirit. Look through your spiritual eyes. Look through, through the Word of God at these things and see them as they are. They are sent as a distraction. View them as a distraction and let that cause you to be drawn ever nearer to the Lord Jesus Christ, cleaving to him in prayer and in, in abiding in his word. And, 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 and just as a man, would, a man on a ship during a storm would cleave to the mast of that ship with all of his might, no matter how strong the wind blows to try to blow him off the, that ship, he tries. In fact, the, the more the wind blows, the stronger he holds on to that mast because that is his life. Today, all around you, the wind is blowing really hard and other people all around you are just getting caught up in that wind and following the wind wherever it goes. But you who love the Lord Jesus Christ, he is that mast in the center of the ship. Cleave to him. Cleave to him. And the stronger the wind blows, let your grip be stronger upon that mast until the storm is over. This message is for those of you who have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.